in this section, we will start looking at polynomials and the vocabulary that goes with them. Some necessary basic vocabulary when working with polynomials includes term, which means a product or quotients of numbers and or variables. And terms can also be single numbers or variables. So as you can see, in each of these examples, a term is one complete product, or it can also be a quotient. So it can be any sort of fraction or quotient. It can be raised to powers, whatever, as long as it's one compact term. Now a polynomial is a term or a combination of terms and all of those variables must have whole number exponents and no variables in the denominator. So for example as you can see we have 9x squared which that's one term and then plus 4x and 4x is another term plus 3 which is another term. So this polynomial is a combination of these three terms. Now a constant is just a single number. So in this last example, the constant is 3. Polynomials should be written in a specific way, and that way is in order of de descending powers, meaning that the exponents of x decrease as you go from left to right. So as you can see in this example, we start with the first term, and x is to the third power. As you move to the right, the power of x decreases. So now we're at x to the second, and then x to the first. And a constant will always be last in any polynomial, because as you can see, there is no variable. Or if there was a variable, it would be written as x to the zeroth power, because remember, x to the zeroth power equals 1. So it's really just 11 times 1. Notice that it goes from 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. So we followed the descending power order. Now, the leading term of a polynomial means that when it, a polynomial is written in descending order, the leading term is the very first term in the polynomial. So in that example, 7x to the third would be the leading term. Now, the leading coefficient means the coefficient or the number that is on the leading term. So again, make sure you write it in descending order. So in that example, again, the leading term is 7x to the third. So the coefficient on that is 7. There are different ways to classify polynomials. So you can see we can classify polynomials in one variable or classify a polynomial in two variables. If you classify in one variable, that means that the polynomial only has one variable throughout it. So in that example, y is the one variable. However, looking over at the two variables, notice in this example we have a's and b's throughout the polynomial. And there are rules. When you have two variables, you'll end up with four terms, as you see here. So we have one term, two, three, and four. Also, the terms must be written in descending powers of a, or whichever variable comes first alphabetically, and ascending or increasing powers of b, or whichever variable comes second within the alphabet. So we have a to the third, then a to the second, then a to the first. So 3, 2, 1, that's descending powers of a. And then if we look at the b's, we have b to the first, b to the third, and b to the third again. So that counts as ascending powers of b. Now, when classifying these, you can also classify polynomials based on how many terms they have. So, if a polynomial has one term, or mono, monomial, one meaning mono, and then binomials have two terms, bi meaning two. So as you can see here, we have 4x as one term and 6 as a second term. And trinomials, as you can probably guess, are three terms, because tri means three, so one, two, and three terms. An important part of working with polynomials is understanding what like terms are. Like terms mean that each term has the exact same variables, and those variables are raised to the exact same exponents. So the only thing that can differ are the coefficients. 
So let's look at this table and examples in here. You notice in this first one, you want to check the variables first and make sure they have the same variables. So as you notice, they both have x and x is both raised to the first power. So these are like terms. It doesn't matter that we have different coefficients because we're only looking at the variables and their exponents. So over here you notice that if we check the variables first, we have an x and an a. They don't match, so they can't be like terms, even though those coefficients are the same. That doesn't matter when looking for like terms. Now on this line, we have y and y. And in both cases, y is being raised to the third power, so we automatically know it has the same variable, it has the same exponent, so they are like terms. Looking at this one, we check. They both have a y, however, don't forget to check the at exponent. One is y to the third, while the other is y to the second. Therefore, those different exponents on the variable make them not like terms. And this last one here, we have more than one variable, so, which is fine. So you just have to check both variables. So on our x term, we have x to the seventh. Over here on our x term, it is also x to the seventh. The y term, y to the fourth, and y to the fourth. However, now let's look over here. Again, we have x and x, y and y. But notice those exponents. In this side, x is being raised to the seventh, while x over here is to the fourth. Automatically, that tells us those are not like terms. And the same goes for the y. They have different exponents, so they are not like terms.